Hi, this is Don McPeak, and thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. For those of you who've been subscribers, thank you for being patient. I travel quite a bit, and I have a lot on my plate, so I'm creating content continuously, and uh, both for YouTube and for um, the Udemy platform. And so this is lecture one. And my teaching style is a little bit different than most people. So in the traditional classic sense, you're going to sit through a bunch of lectures. You're not really going to know what the point of the whole thing is. You're going to have random information shoved at you. And hopefully you'll retain that information by the time you find out what the heck the course is all about. I kind of do things in reverse. I give you the answer and as I give you additional information, hopefully you can bolt that information onto the answer that I've already given you, and it'll make a, a lot more sense. So you can imagine if you've never heard of a car, you didn't know what a car was or anything about it, and you are sitting through a series of lectures about tires and brakes and clutches and mirrors and, you know, you name it, drive shafts. And at the end of the course, the professor says, um, by the way, all of this is used to make a car, and the car is used for A, B, C, D, etc. My style is essentially to describe to you what a car does, what it's used for, and then as we get down to the detail level, and I can describe to you metaphorically, of course, you know, here, here's a tire, here's a brake pedal, here's what they're used for. It makes a whole lot more sense if you know how that all rolls into the higher solution. So here it is, right out of the gates, okay? There are many things that separate pro shooters from amateur shooters on a sort of tactical level. But on a higher level, at the 30,000 foot level, there's one critical thing that separates a pro shooter from an amateur. You ready? Here it is. Okay, I, I can see it on your face. I'm, I'm looking at you right now through that little, that little camera right above the screen. I, I can see it on your face. It's the disappointment. Many of you were expecting some kind of secret code access to secret pro equipment that only pros can get at the camera shop that's somewhere at the top of a mountain you got to have a membership card to get in or there's a secret password that gets you into the codes the the secret settings inside the cameras none of that exists okay there's nothing like that it, i use the same equipment that you do or at the very least we all have access to the same thing so it's it's not about the settings there's no formula okay it's all about planning and technique and positioning and having a plan. So this is the foundation. This is everything. Okay, this, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. And it really is that simple. Don't make the mistake of confusing simple with easy. Okay, if you want to be the heavyweight champion of the world, all you have to do is get in the ring with the current champion and beat the hell out of him. That's it. It's that simple. That's not really that easy. And it's the same thing with sports photography. At least going into it, you know that from a high level, this is, this is your foundation. This is your base. So as a sports photographer, your job is to tell a story through pictures. You are a photojournalist, and that is the definition of photojournalism. You're telling a story through pictures. And like any journalist, you have the six questions that you have to deal with. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. You know, that's what makes up any news story, essentially. And you might remember this from school or whatever. Um, but it's true, you know. And, and these are things that you have to keep in mind when you're telling the story. And again, that's when a, when a pro photographer approaches an event, these are things that's going through his or her mind. So the good news is, of those six, you don't have to worry about three of them. You don't have to spend any time trying to manage them whatsoever. So the who, where, and when have already been defined, okay? The, the teams are defined. The people who are going to play have already been defined, and you really didn't have any say in that. The where and the when, you know, those are spatial and temporal coordinates. You just need to show up at a certain place at a certain time, and that part's done. You've got the first three tackled without any problem at all. The flip side of that coin is the things that you do have to manage are the what, why, and how. And when I talk about what, you know, to a certain degree, I'm saying, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a who 
aspect of that. So uh, I'm taking a little bit of license here. And so the, the what is kind of dehumanizing, <laughs> dehumanizing the players. The, the, the players become part of the what, okay? So the, uh, they're subjects at this point, and we consider that in terms of this lecture, that's, that's part of the what. But you have to determine what am I going to shoot, okay? And then maybe with a deeper dive, we'll, we'll talk about the why. You know, it's an important part of the equation. But, you know, you, you have to understand why. Why do you want that shot? And, and you, you know, to the extent that you have a good reason, you, normally your shots will get better. And then there's the how. You know, this, this is the magic. This is really the secret sauce. And it's all related to the rest of it. So... Um, again, these are the basic building blocks of, of how we move forward. So can you show up at a sporting event and just start taking pictures and hope something good happens? Absolutely. I mean, a lot of you are good sports photographers. You, you're pretty good at shooting and something will happen. You'll capture it and you'll be happy with your photos and life is good. But your photos, the quality of your photos will improve dramatically and in, in direct proportion to your understanding of these three elements. So we're going to have just little mini lectures on each one of these three, what to shoot, why you're shooting it, and how to shoot it. But we'll just do a little bit of a flyover. What to shoot is typically an action. You know, there's a, it's obviously, you're going to identify a particular person, okay? But it's, it's typically not just a picture of that person that, that you're after. You're after something that that person is doing. You know, in this picture right here, this is the LSU coach and the, and the, and the LSU team, and they're just about ready to run out on the field at Tennessee. And, you know, this is kind of an iconic picture this is kind of a tradition for him and that team and so that was my motivation you know that, that what what I wanted to shoot was that moment that is sort of a tradition for that team and that's what was motivating that photograph and to extend this a little bit the why I wanted to shoot it was because it's tradition because that's what they do and so to complete my storytelling that had to be an element an element of it and the how am I going to shoot it you know there there was only one place that I could be to shoot that picture if I was standing in any other place that photograph would not have the same impact it would just it wouldn't look the same I would either be behind them or I couldn't see the players faces or I would be in the way so you know all three elements went into that picture now here's another picture that wasn't so much what I wanted to shoot, but it, the why I wanted to shoot this was more important than kind of the actual picture I got itself. These are two players that had not met for a year. The last time they played together, the player on the right was laying underneath the player on the left whose neck was broken and he could not move. And somehow the player on the right instinctively knew that something was horribly wrong and he didn't get upset or try to push the player off of him. And had he done so, the player on the left, number four from Auburn, would, would have certainly died. And so this reunion was the first time these two players had seen each other. And that's the Auburn player's mom hugging the young man that saved her son's life. So obviously there's a, there's a huge why element to this picture. The motivation really wasn't about what they were doing. It's why I wanted to photograph these two players together. And then this last picture is an example of how I was going to shoot this. So I knew I wanted to shoot down onto the volleyball court so I could actually see the players' faces as they're hitting. And, you know, they're, they're really, you're very limited as to how you can do that. So, you know, in understanding how I needed to shoot this, I knew that I was going to have to go up into the ceiling of the arena. And so, you know, logistically that created all kinds of uh, issues around access and having to get permission and talk to the right people. So it was a really involved process to get that shot, but that all rolls into how the heck am I going to get that shot? And so that's all part of the planning process. So as I said, you know, I've given you the secret sauce up front. There's a lot to think about in here and I promise not to let as much time go by before I post the next lecture. I will create three little mini lectures that will pertain to the what to shoot, why you're shooting it, and, and how to shoot it. So those will all be broken out into different discussions. But think about what I've said. Consider how that applies to the way that you approach 
your sports photography. If you are a skeptic, that's okay. I hope you'll stay with me because I fully intend to change the way you think about your sports photography. So I'll see you in the next lecture.